Welcome to another sermon from the Lewis Church of Christ. And now, here's Mark. Uh, there are a few words, I think, that um, ought to describe every one of us who follow Jesus. And you would know some of those words. Uh, love, that ought to describe a follower of Jesus. Uh, maybe forgiving, faithful, holy, righteous. I mean, just a few words. <laughs> Um, generous. There are just a lot of words that ought to describe every real, devoted follower of Jesus. I want to add another word to the list today, and it's the word go. Go. I mean, after reading the book of Acts again, like all the way through in one setting, I, I left the reading convinced of the word that ought to de characteristically describe every church person, every follower of Jesus, ought to be the word go. Go. Now, I know, I know, last Sunday, the message that the Lord had for every one of us was stop. Re remember? It was stop. And I hope every one of you had an opportunity, at, scratch that, I hope every one of you took an opportunity just to stop with the Lord. Just to stop. I hope every one of you took an opportunity to have a little closet time with Romans chapter 8. Because sometimes we just go way too fast, don't we? Sometimes we try to accomplish way too much, and sometimes our greatest need is simply to stop. And listen to the Lord. And reconnect with the Lord. But I have to tell you that once you've heard from the Lord and once you feel reconnected to the Lord, I, I want you to know that one of the first things you'll hear Him want you to do is go. Go. Listen to this combination. Uh, Matthew chapter 28. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. I mean, it's after the resurrection of Jesus. But they worshipped him. Then Jesus came to them and he said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go. Now, it's interesting to me that the word go, the way it's used in the original language, sets it up that could literally be trans translated as you go. As you go. Therefore, as you go about your life, as you go about your work, as you go about your business, as, as you go about your schooling, as you go about your education, as you go, as you go about life, go make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Don't you love that paragraph? Go. I want to combine that with another text, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, friends, there is no way you can read those two passages and not hear the word go. It's impossible for you not to hear the word go. Go. In fact, from the text, I want to suggest that for every one of us, the word go ought to describe, actively describe every one of us. And first of all, we ought to be we ought to go in simple obedience. Wouldn't you say that ought to be true of every follower of Jesus? That we go in simple obedience. In Matthew, the Matthew passage, it simply said, and the disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain, where Jesus told them to go. Basically, Jesus said, hey, meet, meet me at the mountain. And so they met him at the mountain. It's simple obedience, right? Go, they, they went. Simple obedience. Hey, last week, if you remember, Jesus told them, and now first of all, I, 
I, I don't want you going anywhere yet. I want you to wait in Jerusalem for the gift my father promised. And you remember the story. Uh, they, well, the disciples got together. They, they didn't go anywhere. They stayed in Jerusalem. In fact, they all gathered in an upper room and they waited. Simple obedience. In fact, every follower of Jesus promises, promises, they live this, that from this point forward, I'm going in simple obedience to the master. Go. Simple obedience. That's why I personally believe that baptism is the, is the first step for anyone deciding to surrender to Jesus Christ and make him Lord and Savior. It's really a test of simple obedience. So here's my question for you today. When Jesus says go, will you go? Go. Simple obedience. Go. And we ought to go with the lead of the Holy Spirit. We ought to go with the lead of the Holy Spirit. Now, remember last week, they were told, you know, in our message, stop. <laughs> they were told, hey, don't go anywhere yet. I want you to stop. I want you to just wait in Jerusalem for the gift my Father promised. And you know what the gift is, right? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Our text today says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Yes, we are to go in simple obedience. And friends, you and I ought to go with the lead of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit prompts, we need to go. We need to go. If the Holy Spirit says go, we go. If the Holy Spirit says love, we love. If the Holy Spirit says be generous, we be generous. If the Holy Spirit says give, we give. If the Holy Spirit says forgive, we forgive. Right? It's just simple obedience. With the lead of the Holy Spirit. I think the classic example is Philip in Acts chapter 8. Do you remember the story of Philip? Acts chapter 8 tells us that the, the angel of the Lord, the messenger of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord came to Philip and said, Hey, I want you to go to the south road. The desert road. The road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. Go. And then it tells us that he went. And he met a man from Ethiopia. The story ends with the man from Ethiopia hearing the gospel, hearing the presentation, hearing the grace of Jesus Christ. And the Ethiopian said, I want, I want this. I want to be baptized. Can I be baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all of your heart, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, you may. And the story ends up with Philip baptizing him. Now my question is, how in the world did this guy from Ethiopia become a Christian? I'll tell you how. Philip, who was on the go because the Spirit said go, went, met this man, told him a story, and now we have another follower, devoted follower of Jesus Christ. Go. In simple obedience, go with the lead of the Holy Spirit and go forward with the mission of Jesus. The Great Commission, you know it. The Great Commission. I want you to go with the mission of Jesus. The Great Commission, Matthew 28, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go. Remember, as you go, as you go about your life, as you go about your work, as you go about your school, as you go about your business, as you go about your life, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. The mission of Jesus. Now, simply put, the mission of Jesus, you know it, go make disciples. Or in other words, he explains later, I want you to reach, baptize, and teach, Right? Reach, baptize, and teach the mission of Jesus. That's why the third prong of our beyond strategy is this, refusing to be complacent. We will go beyond our self-centeredness, sharing the good news of Jesus with those who don't yet know him, right? 
Does go describe you? I mean, think about it. In light of those things, simple obedience with the lead of the Spirit and forward with the mission of Jesus, honestly, does go <coughs> describe you? Uh, here's what I, I often see. I often see, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of followers of Jesus, a lot of Christians who are kind of overwhelmed with guilt. I, I know a lot of Christ followers who are kind of overwhelmed with guilt, guilt for the fact that they haven't been going. Overwhelmed with the fact that they're not going with the mission of Christ. In, in fact, overwhelmed with the guilt that I haven't even tried. Do you realize the statistics say that about 7% of Christ followers never even attempt to share their faith? 7%? or only 7% try, attempt to share their faith. 93% never try. Well, can I ask you again? Does go describe you? Uh, you know that in August, I did my sabbatical month. During the last week of my sabbatical month, uh, I had the opportunity to do a week of solitude. Uh, during my week of solitude, I mean, just me, I had the opportunity, well, I shut my phone off for five days. I told that to somebody last week, and he said, I would die. <laughs> but seriously, I shut my phone off for five days. For five days, it was off. For five days, no phone calls, no emails, no texts, no zero communication with the outside world. I want you to know... It was fabulous. <laughs> you should try it. But there was a downside. There was a downside. When I came to the day I turned my phone back on, <laughs> when my phone reconnected with a cell phone tower, my phone went spastic. <laughs> And after just a couple of moments, my phone told me, indicated to me, I had 179 emails, 57 text messages, 13 voicemail messages, and who knows how many missed calls. Ugh. That is not what I wanted to come back to after a week of solitude. All of that? Who in the world wants to wade through all of that? And I have to be honest with you, I was so tempted, I was so tempted just to delete them all. I'm not going to look at a thing, I'm not going to listen to a thing, I'm not going to read anything, I'm just going to delete them all. I mean, if it was really that important, they're going to contact me again, right? Right? If, if that were one of you, please try again this week. <laughs> oh. But, but. I, I just felt so overwhelmed, so paralyzed. I, I didn't want to do any of it. I have a feeling there are some, maybe many, in the audience right now, especially in light of this third thought that we go forward with the mission of Christ. I have a feeling for some of you, you feel so guilty. You're overwhelmed, actually, with guilt, and it's paralyzed you because, because you haven't been going. In fact, you, you don't even try. Can I give you permission right now? I want to give you permission right now to just delete all of that guilt. I mean, don't even wade through it. Just delete all of the guilt, and I want you to start again today. And I just want you to, to start today and promise from this point forward, I'm going to go. I'm going. I'm going to go in simple obedience. I'm going to go with the lead of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to go forward with the mission of Jesus. Hey, delete all of the guilt. And let's start today from this point forward. So, amen. Gene Apple is one of my favorite preachers from California. Uh, Gene is a great communicator, and I heard him tell this story. Two guys went to an art gallery. And when they happened to be in the art gallery, they came across this painting. And it was a painting of two people playing chess. 
One of the fellows in the painting playing chess was just an ordinary looking guy, and the other was, well, he looked kind of evil, maybe representative of the devil. The title of the painting was Checkmate. In the painting, the ordinary guy is just kind of looking down at the chessboard, and he has only one piece left. It's the king. It's the king. So the two of them just kind of stood there, lingering at the painting. One of the guys who's lingering at the painting is an international chess champion. And he just... He just, it, it's intriguing to him. There's, there's, something, there's something about the painting that's bothering him. And so he just, he just lingers. Well, the other guy who's with him kind of gets impatient with him and says, listen, I'm going to go visit the, the other paintings in the, in the art gallery. I'll catch you later. I'll find you later. And the guy, uh, the chess champion, just stands there and he just, he just starts shaking his head and he starts moving pieces in the air in his mind and he just... He just comes so frustrated, and he just studies the painting. After about an hour, his friend comes back, and he says, you're still at the painting? You're still looking at this painting? And, and, and the chess champion says, yeah, we have got to find the artist. We have got to find the artist, and we have got to tell him that he needs to change his painting or change the title of this painting. There's something wrong with the painting. And the other guy says, what in the world could be wrong with the painting? And the chess champion said, we've got to find him. We've got to talk him into changing the painting or changing the title of the painting because he has named this painting Checkmate. But that's wrong. It misleads the painting because the king still has one more move. The king still has one more move. <laughs> now, in Jean's church, uh, when he announced to the congregation and said to the church audience, the king still has one more move, the crowd went nuts. I mean, the crowd just exploded with all kinds of noise because in, in case you missed it, the good news of that story and the good news of our story today is that the king still has one more move. <laughs> well... Uh, Now, I know this is the East Coast and not the West Coast, and I know often when we get excited, we usually kind of nod our head, maybe a little, amen. <laughs> maybe, a little, maybe a little smattering golf applause on occasion. <laughs> but the king has one more move. Yeah. All right. Now, now, just humor me for a moment, all right? <laughs> David was a little boy up against a great giant named Goliath, right? He's in trouble. Now David, uh, he tries on King Saul's armor. Now King Saul's armor is a 52 long, and David is accustomed to 36 short. It's not going to work. He's in trouble. It looks like checkmate. But the king still has one more move. He does. Oh, or what about Daniel? Remember Daniel? Daniel was thrown into a lion's den because he refused to stop praying to his God. And so what, one day he was thrown into the hungry lion's den. It looked like checkmate. The next day King Darius came out and, and remo removed the, the, the stone away from the den and says, Daniel, is everything okay? And Daniel said, oh yeah, everything's fine. The lions have been put on a low-protein diet. Everything's cool. <laughs> Everything's cool. I'm fine, and I will still keep praying to my God. Amen. The king had one more move. How about Moses? Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses led the Israelites away from a tyrant. The Moses, on the Exodus, they came out... A, a, and they were kind of, they came up to the Red Sea. 
Well, Pharaoh at this time changed his mind, and, and the most powerful army in the world started to chase after them. They're up against the Red Sea. What would they do? And then the Israelites, in anger, questioned Moses, what were you thinking? And so then Moses questions God, what were you thinking? <laughs> but the king still had one more move. What about on Good Friday? On Good Friday, they tried Jesus. They judged him. They arrested him. They spit on him. They mocked him. They flogged him. They hung him on a tree. They killed him on a cross. They buried him in a tomb to rot. To rot. Like everyone else in history's past, ever since sin entered this gloomy, dark, sorry world, they laid him in a tomb to rot. It was checkmate. The devil was screaming checkmate. The people were thinking, it's over. That's all, folks. It's the end. The devil was screaming checkmate. But the king still had one more move. <laughs> And then, this is so awesome. And then the resurrected Jesus Christ rallied those who followed him, rallied those who believed in him. And he said, fellas, ladies, I want you to know I will keep building my church and the gates of Haiti will never overcome it. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, I want you to go. And as you go, as you go about your work, as you go about your business, as you go about your school, as you go about your life, I want you to go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Friends, this world is in a mess. Sin enslaves. In, in fact, sometimes this world, world just it gets worse, it seems to get worse and worse and worse and darker and darker and darker. And don't you feel sometimes like it's checkmate? But I want you to know through the church, I want you to know working through people like me and working through people like you, I want you to know today the king still has one more move. And it's true. So I want to say today, Let's go. Let's go. Let's, di let's delete all the overwhelming past not going. <laughs> and let's go. From this point forward, let's go. Just in simple obedience, with the lead of the Spirit, forward in the mission of Jesus Christ. Let's go. This has been a presentation of the Lewis Church of Christ. We are located at 15183 Coastal Highway, Milton, Delaware, three miles north of Lewis on Highway 1. Our service times are 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday morning.